Welcome to Thrombotic Thrombocytopenic Purpura, TTP. This video is the second in a three-part series that will review TTP's pathophysiology, diagnosis, and management. In this video, we will cover part two, diagnosis. Over the next few minutes, we will discuss the following take-home points. When there is microangiopathic hemolytic anemia and thrombocytopenia, suspect TTP. TTP is a clinical diagnosis made by seeing schistocytes on the peripheral blood smear. The clinical diagnosis is confirmed when ADAMTS13 activity is less than 10%. Let's start with the clinical presentation. A mnemonic to help remember the clinical presentation is FATRN, which represents the classic pentad of findings. The two most common clinical findings are thrombocytopenia and anemia. Also common are neurologic symptoms. About 40% of patients experience major neurologic symptoms like seizure, stroke, and coma, and about 25% of patients minor symptoms such as headache and confusion. Less commonly, presenting findings include fever, which occurs in about 10% of patients, and renal insufficiency, which is uncommon and, when present, mild. All five combined manifestations occur rarely in less than 5% of patients. Other common manifestations include abdominal pain and nausea or vomiting. In fact, gastrointestinal symptoms are quite common, occurring in about 70% of patients. Due to thrombocytopenia, patients also present with bleeding and or purpura, which occurs in about 50% of patients. Finally, due to their hemolytic anemia, anemia, patients present with weakness, which is found in about 60% of patients. Let's discuss the pertinent laboratory findings. As described earlier, you should expect to see thrombocytopenia and hemolytic anemia as demonstrated by elevated LDH, hypobilirubinemia, decreased haptoglobin, increased reticulocytosis, and because it is a non-immune mediated hemolysis, a negative Coombs test. The most important piece of the TTP diagnosis is to evaluate the peripheral blood smear. The blood film will show the presence of fragmented red blood cells called schistocytes, including helmet cells and triangular cells. The abundance of schistocytes is variable and can be affected by disease duration and blood smear quality. In the appropriate clinical context, a minimum finding of two or more schistocytes per high power field is enough to confirm your clinical diagnosis. The likelihood of severe ADAMTS13 deficiency in adults with suspected TTP can be estimated using the plasmic score. The plasmic score helps estimate the pretest probability of TTP. The letters in plasmic stand for P, platelet count less than 30,000. L, the presence of lysis or hemolysis markers as defined by reticulocyte count greater than 2.5%, undetectable haptoglobin or indirect bilirubin greater than 2 mg per deciliter. A, the absence of active cancer and S, the absence of solid organ or stem cell transplant. M represents a mean corpuscular volume or MCV less than 90. I represents an international normalized ratio or INR less than 1.5. And C represents a creatinine less than 2.0 mg per deciliter. Each item gets a score of 1 point. A low score of 0 to 4 points suggests that severe ADAMTS13 deficiency is not present and has a specificity of approximately 99%. An intermediate score of 4 to 5 points predicts other disorders such as drug-induced thrombotic microangiopathy, disseminated intravascular coagulation, or hemolytic uremic syndrome. A high score of 6 to 7 points is predictive of severe ADAMTS13 deficiency with a sensitivity of approximately 91%. Once a clinical diagnosis has been made, the laboratory test that helps confirm or refute the diagnosis is ADAMTS13 testing. As discussed in our first video, TTP Basics, the primary pathophysiology of TTP is severe deficiency of ADAMTS13 
as manifested by activity levels less than 10%. This finding confirms the diagnosis of acquired TTP, that is TTP due to an acquired ADMTS13 inhibitor, and congenital TTP, TTP due to congenital absence of, of or mutation in ADMTS13. Severe deficiency can also be seen in sepsis and malignancy. Therefore, ADMTS13 activity 10 per, less than 10% is not 100% sensitive or specific for TTP, and laboratory values alone cannot be used to make or exclude the TTP diagnosis. If ADMTS13 shows low activity levels of 10 to 60%, then it is more likely that the patient has an underlying inflammatory disorder such as sepsis or malignancy. However, low activity can also be seen in TTP that has been partially treated due to earlier transfusion or treatment with steroids. Therefore, do not dismiss the diagnosis of TTP on the basis of low ADMTS13 activity alone without careful review of the clinical history. Finally, if ADMTS13 activity levels are normal, that is greater than 60%, then this effectively rules out the diagnosis, and you can be confident that no matter the underlying cause, it is not TTP. In summary, when there is microangiopathic hemolytic anemia and thrombocytopenia, suspect TTP. TTP is a clinical diagnosis made by seeing schistocytes on the peripheral blood smear. The diagnosis is confirmed when ADMTS13 activity is found to be less than 10%. This brings us to the end of part two, diagnosis, and our discussion of thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura in which we have investigated the consequences of missing ADMTS13 due to its congenital or acquired deficiency.